In this screencast, we will discuss the continuous cycling method, which is also sometimes known as the Ziegler-Nichols method. So this method is used in order to develop tuning parameters for a process. Another important part about this methodology is that it is a closed loop test, which many methodologies used for developing tuning parameters are open loop, where there is no control being provided to the system. But in this case, the system is being controlled by a controller in this analysis. So in order to use this tuning parameter method, we have to get some understanding of the dynamic characteristic of how this control loop behaves. And the way we do this is by using the following procedure. The first step of this is to shut off the integral control, the I control, and the derivative control, the D control. And when you do that, it leaves a P-only controller. Sometimes I control cannot be exactly shut off, but to counteract the fact that you can't shut I control exactly off, what you can do is select a very high value of I such that the controller acts as a de facto P only controller. D is generally easy to shut off. The second step is to put the controller in automatic. In other words, this is the part which gets us the closed loop. The third step is to alter the controller gain, Kc. Depending on the controller you have, this could also be altering the proportional band. I'm going to keep on altering your controller gain until the response that is seen is undamped. So in other words, we're in a state where the oscillations are neither growing or receding. So what does this look like in terms of the response that we would see? So here we'll do a sketch where our x-axis is time and our y-axis is the variable that we're interested in following. So if the system is perfectly undamped, we would see response that looks something like this, where we could see consistent oscillations. This would be our undamped response. However, it is certainly possible that we could see a response which instead of it being undamped, we see something where we have growing oscillations. So this is a system which is unstable and obviously undesirable. And what this means if you were to actually see this is that the assessment of the gain that you want is too high. On the other hand, if what you are seeing are decaying oscillations, something on these lines here, you have an underdamp system, but in terms of finding the Kc value you want, this would mean the Kc is too low. So what does this all mean once we've actually found this value? What it means is that the gain that corresponds to the undamped response is the ultimate gain. And the period of this response is the ultimate period. And then from there what we can do is use the Ziegler-Nichols tuning parameters in order to get an assessment. So this table on the bottom right, this represents the Ziegler-Nichols tuning parameters. These tuning parameters were used in order to obtain a undamped process with a quarter decay ratio. So if you recall, the decay ratio represents the relationship between the second highest peak and the top peaks. So therefore, if I call this height here B and this height here A, the decay ratio, sometimes shortened as dr, can be defined as B over A. So for Ziegler-Nichols, it's designed such that this ratio will be approximately 0.25 when you use these parameters for your process. So just recall from these parameters that we have KCU, that is also known as the ultimate gain, and P sub U, which represents the ultimate period. If transfer functions are known, we can use direct substitution, but when we do this, the controller transfer function must be a P-only controller. Why? Because the continuous cycling method takes advantage of the fact that the controller has been set to be P-only. And then from that, we can get the ultimate gain and ultimate period using direct substitution, which will then allow us to substitute into the Ziegler-Nichols table for whether it's a P-only controller, a PI controller, or a PID controller. So the last question to ask is, what problems can be confronted by using this methodology? The first problem with using continuous cycling is that it pushes the process to its stability limit. 
And this can be very problematic if you have unstable processes that are naturally unstable or processes which have safety issues. So in other words, fears of things running away. So you don't want to push a process to its stability limit, particularly if it's not going to be very easy to get it back to its stability limit. So that can be a potential problem with using this method. The second is that it is a trial and error method, which means that it can be time consuming. And this is particularly true for processes that are sluggish or take a long time to respond. So if the process takes five or 10 seconds in order to show how a change in the controller gain makes the process more stable or less stable or gets to the desired undamped, then it might not be so bad. However, if a time constant this is on the order of hours or days, then using this methodology can take a very, very long time. And there are a host of other techniques that can be used which can be more time efficient. A third problem is that the quarter decay ratio is unacceptable. So there are many control loops where having a decay ratio of one fourth is much too high for a process and it would be better if it was something much lower. In some cases we even want to eliminate the possibility of oscillations. So therefore the quarter decay ratio is which is what Ziegler and Nichols based their desired values, the parameters they used based on their research back in the 1940s could mean that it might not work well for the process you have now. So therefore, Ziegler-Nichols or the continuous cycle method is not the be-all, end-all in terms of methods to find tuning parameters, but it is certainly one method that is used. Important point to remember here is that these tuning parameters represent just a start. So oftentimes, the values which the Ziegler-Nichols table presented may not be sufficient in terms of conducting this analysis. It can represent a nice start, but you're going to probably have to modify potentially the controller gain or the integral time constant or the derivative time constant. So this is not just the final answer. There usually is a bit more secondary tuning that is conducted afterwards.